Welcome welcome. Here are the best Miami Dolphins news in YouTube. Tua Tungavailoa have the lastest offseason training. He did one of the hardest quarterback workout. Brian Flores at UNC Pro Day report. The best prospect for Dolphins at Miami and Carolina Pro Day. Miami Dolphins number 6 pick. Kyle Pitts or Najee Harris. Click subscribe button now. Tua Tungavailoa's latest offseason training highlight. Amid all of the looming changes to be made to the Miami Dolphins in the coming month, one that that appears set to stay the same is the status of Miami's starting quarterback. Tua Tungavailoa appears to be taking that responsibility to heart, often being seen on social media training with a newfound intensity after his 2020 offseason was largely spent rehabilitating from a dislocated hip that ended his college career prematurely. Whether it be throwing sessions or sweltering workouts in South Florida, Tungavailoa has seemingly got a little taste of everything thus far this offseason. But this? This is new. Tungavailoa was recently spotlighted engaged in a complex exercise that tests both the body and the mind, working on balance, hand-eye coordination and core strength all in one shot. Consider it a more high-stakes version of patting your head and rubbing your belly. Seeing the constant peaks behind the curtain at Tungavailoa's training routine should offer plenty inspiration for Dolphins fans who are hoping to see him live up to his status as the number 5 overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. Yes, Tungavailoa's physical fitness will help. So, too, will the exit of offensive coordinator Chan Gailey, who never really seemed to mesh with Tungavailoa during his rookie season in 2020. If Tungavailoa can make the same kinds of gains in his pre-snap process and read progressions as he's seemingly making from a physical standpoint, 2021 will be a much more exciting and productive year for the young quarterback. Between his own improvements and the improvements of the roster around him offensively, there's going to be ample opportunity for that big, year two, elite that so many coaches and general managers hope to see from young quarterback. Chorus at UNC Pro Day Report the best prospect for Dolphins at Miami and Carolina Pro Day. With the 2021 NFL Scouting Combine operating under a different format this year, Pro Day workouts are taking on a heightened importance this spring. Miami and North Carolina were among the schools that held their Pro Days on Monday, giving some top 2021 NFL draft prospects a chance to make an impression on scouts and NFL executives. 31 NFL teams sent representatives to the UNC Pro Day. The Rams were the only squad that did not attend. Head coaches Bill Belichick, Patriots, Brian Flores, Dolphins, and Joe Judge, Giants, were among the attendees at Miami's Pro Day. How did the top talents perform? 1. Gregory Rousseau. Scouts had a chance to get a look at Rousseau for the first time in a while, as he opted out of the 2020 season after a monster 2019 campaign that saw him finish second in the nation in sacks. 15.5, to Chase Young, 16.5. The high school wide receiver turned college edge rusher was clocked at 4.69 seconds in the 40-yard dash by one NFL scout who was on hand for the event, Parisa's Senior Bowl Executive Director Jim Nagy. He has rare size and length, measuring nearly 6 foot 7 and 266 pounds with an 11-inch hand and 83 and a quarter inch wingspan. He posted marks of 30 inches in the vertical jump, 9 feet, 7 inches in the broad jump and 21 reps on the bench press. Rousseau is NFL.com analyst Bucky Brooks's top-rated edge rusher in the 2021 NFL Draft, but he was outshined by his teammate listed below on Mutt Jalen Phillips. Phillips, Brooks's number two edge rusher in this year's class, drew a big reaction from the crowd at the Hurricanes Pro Day with a 40 of 4.56 seconds, Per NFL Network reporter Sarah Walsh, who was on assignment in Coral Gables, Florida. That's a tremendous time for a player who weighed in at 260 pounds. He also showed his explosiveness with a 36-inch vertical jump and broad jump of 10 feet, 5 inches, according to Nagy. There's no doubt Phillips is one of the most talented players in this year's draft class, but durability will be a big factor in his evaluation, given his injury history at UCLA where he played in 2017 and 18 before transferring to Miami. If not for those concerns, Phillips might be in the conversation to go in the top 10 this year, per NFL.com draft guru Daniel Jeremiah. 3. Javante Williams. Williams, who rates as Brooks's number 3 RB in the draft, 
posted a time of 4.55 seconds in the 40-yard dash. While that result isn't going to generate a ton of buzz, NFL Network analyst and former personnel executive Mark Ross doesn't see it as a significant strike against a player who's known more for his power and contact balance anyway. Javante Williams has unbelievable vision, he has unbelievable balance and feet, said Ross during Monday's edition of NFL Now. The big concern when you watched him on film, though, was did he have that explosiveness and home run speed? He did run the 4.55 today, so that will be the concern for those who did have concerns about the speed. He didn't really blow it out with that, but that is not his game. His game is the power, his game is the shiftiness, his game is the grinded out type style that does suit itself well for the NFL. Coming off a 19 touchdown season in 2020, 20, third most in the FBS, Williams posted a 36 inch vertical jump, broad jump of 10 feet, 3 inches, 4.09 second short shuttle, 6.93 second three cone drill, and 22 bench press reps on Monday, per the school. Miami Dolphins number six pick. Kyle Pitts or Najee Harris. The Miami Dolphins are projected to select an offensive weapon in the first round of next month's NFL draft after trading away the number three overall pick, then moving back inside the top 10 this week at number six. Jim Nagy, executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl, said Sunday on SportsCenter that Florida tight end Kyle Pitts is coming off the board early and could be who the Dolphins are targeting. They did a great job of moving around and I think what they want to do is to provide Tua with weapons," Nagy said. What they've done is position themselves for the best pass catcher in this year's draft, whether it be Kyle Pitts or the receivers, the Alabama duo Jalen Waddell and Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase from LSU. And I think the pick is going to be Pitts. You can make the case, a strong argument, Kyle Pitts is the best receiver in this draft. Let's not forget. Head coach Brian Flores, during his time with the Patriots, they had a, they had a lot of success with dynamic, two tight end offenses. So pairing Pitts with Mike Jasicki down the field, gotta be attractive to them. It's a really, really deep receiver class. They can go find starters into the third round this year but the tight end position has the biggest shelf of any position in terms of where Pitts is to the next best tight end. So I think they would take Pitts here at 6 and follow back later and add that wide receiver. At 6 foot 6, 250 pounds, Pitts has zero wasted movement in his tough to cover frame. He ran a 4.46 last week that caught the attention of scouts, solidifying his draft grade as a projected top 10 selection. Unstoppable over 8 games as a junior, Pitts caught 43 passes for 770 yards and 12 touchdowns leading the SEC in several categories at the tight end spot as a first-team All-American. He's battling Smith, Waddle and Chase for the right to be taken first off the board as a pass catcher. Earlier this month, NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah called Pitts the most likely player in the entire draft class to put together a Hall of Fame career. If you were going to pick the player most likely to have a half career in this draft class, I think the overwhelming choice around the NFL would be Kyle Pitts," Jeremiah said. I would take Pitts, I would, I think it's a no-brainer. We've talked about how high the ceiling is with him. I think he can emerge as the best tight end in the National Football League. He has that type of dynamic ability.